There are many subjects and issues on which I disagree with Bill Maher, but I never thought this would be one that I'd feel compelled to make a video about. Back in November, Stan Lee passed away at the age of 95. Lee was best known for his work at Marvel Comics and during his time he was responsible for creating characters such as Captain Marvel, Daredevil, Hulk, Iron Man, Spider-Man, Thor and X-Men. His influence on popular culture was so vast and expansive that his death was understandably mourned by literally hundreds of millions of fans all over the world. Bill Maher was not one of those fans. In fact, Bill Maher was so much not a fan of Stan Lee or his work that just four days after his death, Bill Maher felt compelled to write a blog on his website called Adulting that not only disrespected Stan Lee's life's work, it also mocked and ridiculed anyone who calls themselves a comic book fan despite being a full-grown, quote, adult. Now I need to make something clear, and that is that I am not a comic book fan. I'm not a Stan Lee fanboy, and in the past 20 years I've seen only a handful of superhero movies. My objection to Bill Maher's ignorant comments and opinions do not come from a place of emotional investment in Stan Lee's work, or a place of offence, because I don't have any. Now the reason that's important is because after Maher posted his blog, it, unsurprisingly, upset, pissed off and offended a lot of people, who reacted the way that you would expect a lot of upset and pissed off people on the internet to do. Maher responded to this huge negative backlash in one of the lamest and most disingenuous ways possible, by claiming the reaction to his blog proves his original point. What? So a hugely popular and influential and beloved celebrity dies, you then write a deliberately offensive blog insulting that celebrity and that celebrity's fans a few days later, and when these offended and upset fans react to your offensive and upsetting blog, in your mind, that proves you right. That's some pretty piss-weak reasoning there, especially coming from one of the guys who loves to mock religious people for being unreasonable and champions himself as a rational voice of reason. Now, it's okay for someone to not be a fan of comic books, just like it's okay for someone not to be a fan of a certain type of music or movies or literature or any other art form. In fact, that is perfectly normal. We aren't supposed to like everything. It would be weird if anyone did. What's not okay is for someone to assume that their dislike for a certain art form is because A, that art form has little to no value, B, it requires little to no talent or skill, and C, it is only appreciated by people who are immature and intellectually inferior to yourself. This is what Bill Maher wrote in the blog. The guy who created Spider-Man and the Hulk has died, and America is in mourning, deep, deep mourning, for a man who inspired millions to, I don't know, watch a movie, I guess. Reducing the vast body of work that Stan Lee did down to inspiring people to go see a movie, I guess, is kind of like saying Shakespeare inspired people to, I don't know, go to the theatre, I suppose, or, or saying that Beethoven inspired people to, uh, I don't know, buy a CD, maybe? Also, it's a good job Stan Lee did inspire people to go to movies, considering one of those movies was Iron Man 3, which featured a cameo from you, Bill, you hypocritical twat. I bet you weren't complaining about Stan Lee when the fucking royalty checks came in, did you? Someone on Reddit posted, I'm so incredibly grateful I live in a world that included Stan Lee. Personally, I'm grateful I lived in a world that included oxygen and trees, but to each his own. <laughs> uh -huh. I mean, is that even funny? Like, as if people are supposed to sit on chat forums talking about how grateful they are for oxygen and trees. I'm pretty sure everybody, by default, is grateful 
for oxygen and trees, Bill. And if that's the level, if that's the standard at which human beings have to reach in order for us to be considered to have had a life of any value, then we're pretty much all fucked, aren't we? However, there are moments in my life when I am less grateful that oxygen and trees exist. Normally, that comes when I'm watching your stand-up. Now, I have nothing against comic books. <laughs> uh, 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 bollocks, you don't. Right? Okay. A, bollocks. And B, uh, well, there isn't a B because the A was so great. <laughs> I read them now and then when I was a kid. And I was all out of Hardy Boys. Hardy Boys, eh? Brother Nero, I knew you'd come. But the assumption everyone had back then, both adults and the kids, was that comic books were for kids. Seriously, Bill? That is the argument you're gonna run with on this? Okay, okay, fine. Let's break this down. But the assumption, okay, the definition of an assumption is, and I quote, a thing or belief or an opinion or idea that is accepted to be true or certain to happen without proof. Hmm. Accepting something to be true without proof. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? To you at all, Bill? Everyone had argumentum ad populum, Bill. Just because everyone believes something doesn't make it more true. The more people believe something doesn't mean it becomes more true. Again, arguing that something without proof is true because more people believe it. Does it again sounding really familiar, this isn't it? But the assumption everyone had back then. Well, I wipe a monkey's ass, quite frankly, with what you and everyone else assumed to be true back then. It's not just that this is a really bad argument, it's the fact it's being made by Bill Maher, one of the so-called champions of reason and rationality. One of the crusaders against religious beliefs and all this other stuff that is unreasonable, upon which the same exact arguments are being made. I mean, do you not see, Bill, how making an argument that this is what people assumed to be true a long time ago and everyone believed it, is that not what... I mean, this is half a sentence. This is seven words. This is one half of a sentence and you've committed three logical fallacies so far in it. And when you grew up, you moved on to big boy books without pictures. I mean, seriously? We're going down the whole, oh, it's got pictures, therefore it's a kid's book. I mean, where, 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 is, the, where is the common sense in that kind of reasoning? Where is there? Why is there this idea that because something has pictures, that it's less, a book has pictures, therefore it's less sophisticated than one that's just plain text? I mean, could we not extrapolate that same reasoning out to say people who go to art galleries must be borderline handicapped, right? They must be mentally ill because there's no text in a fucking, in an art gallery. I went to see the fucking Michelangelo fucking exhibit. I went to see the Statue of David. I went to see Da Vinci's fucking exhibit. I went to see this fucking art. It's there. But there's no text there, is it? It's literally just pictures. I mean, it's the system. Do you have to be literally handicapped in order for... Do you have to have brain damage to appreciate the Sistine Chapel? I mean, I can only assume that Bill, hold on, I can only assume, Bill, that you've never heard of, say, this book here. It's called Mouse, right? It is a, it is a, it's a graphic novel, or as you call it, a comic book. As you can see, it's all pictures there. It was written, it was, uh, it was written and created by the son of a Holocaust survivor, and it's basically him telling his dad's story of what it's like to be a Jew in Nazi Germany. Obviously, the Jews are played by the mice, and the... You know, the uh, cat, the cat there plays the Nazi. I mean, and, and you know, but you know, you're right. I mean, this is so unsophisticated. Only won a fucking Pulitzer Prize, didn't it? But then, 20 years ago or so, something happened. Adults decided they didn't have to give up kids stuff. Citation needed, I'm afraid, on that one, Bill. You mean, you can't just say 20 years ago, something happened. Have you given any thought or have you got any theories as to what that something could be? Have you got any ideas as to what that something is? What, what happened 20 years ago? And let's say 20 years ago, we're now in 2019, so this would be the end of the 20th century, before the beginning of the 20th century. So, so before 1999, so what you're saying is before 1999, 
No kid, adults never. No one. No, only kid. Kids only watch kid stuff until, but up to 1999. Do I even need to refute that? Do I even need to dis to dis disprove that fucking that 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 claim there? Yeah, you're right. I mean, I mean, Disney movies. Nobody watch. No one who was old enough to vote, drink, or fuck. Uh, no, d nobody watched Pinocchio or Dumbo or the fucking Jungle Book or Alice in Wonderland. You know, nobody over the age of reason. Fucking no, no one who was old enough. No one who was 18 plus. No one who could get into a fucking R-rated movie. None of them continue to read things like Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit or Lord of the Flies or fucking you know, or anything like that, did they? No, or the Lion and Witch in the Pissing Wardrobe, all of which were written for kids. Do you also not realise that a lot of graphic novels and comics books, Bill, were not written for fucking kids? Things like, you know, 300, Old Boy, you know, V for Vendetta, you know, and Watchmen. These are not for children. These are not for kids. So, you know, they're not meant for a, 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 they're meant for a more mature audience. I know they've got pictures and that apparently being able to draw scares Bill Maher, but still. Now shortly after this blog was published, there was a statement uh, released um, on the realstanley.com. Uh, I don't know who was who who uh, who wrote the uh, actual uh, press uh, actual press release. I don't know who was responsible for it, but it included this statement. We are grateful that we can say you have the right to your opinion that comic books are childish and unsophisticated. Many said the same about Charles Dickens, Steinbeck, Melville, and even Shakespeare. Now, back in January, Bill decided to double down on this blog by ba basically re, you know, re, you know, constituting this entire argument in a segment on new rules, right? and in, in, and he specifically responded to that statement that people said the same thing about Charles Dickens and Shakespeare. And his exact response was, No, they didn't. <laughs> Actually, Bill, yes, they did. Shakespeare specifically was criticised by people like Samuel Pepys in 1662. He was criticised by uh, Tolstoy. Tolstoy describes Shakespeare as trivial. Voltaire actually said, and I quote, I call into question the measure of any man that felt that Shakespeare was much more than a pile of dung. Charlotte Bronte said of Charles Dickens, and I quote, He seems to me too often weak and twaddling. An amiable nature is caricatured, not faithfully rendered. Literary critic G. H. Hughes said that when reading Dickens, and I quote, we do not turn over the pages in search of thought, delicate psychological observation, grace of style, charm or composition, but we enjoy them like children at play, laughing and crying at the images before us. In short, he said that Dickens was childish and unsophisticated. Read James Baldwin, read Toni Morrison, read Michael Eric Dyson. As if it's impossible to believe, as if he, it's, it's like he can't believe that if you read comic books, it's impossible to believe that you are capable or have even been curious to read anything else but. I, Bill, once owned a, co a copy of the complete works of William Shakespeare. Fucking thing was about that thick, really tiny fucking text, and a fucking there's like one play for every four pages. It was fucking massive. I read the whole fucking thing from cup from start to fucking finish. I have read both volumes of the Holocaust Encyclopedia. That's over twenty thousand pages. I've also read The Idiot and Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. Right, but also. But right, apart, aside from that, apart from that, a couple of weeks ago, I sat up from 10 at night till 5.30 in the morning watching WrestleMania, jumping around like a 10 year old who's had too much fizzy fucking lemonade. Ryan is barely moving. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You see, Bill, just because I'm 39 years old and just because I really, really like professional wrestling 
doesn't mean that I'm incapable or that I've never had the inkling to pick up a book and learn something and appreciate and enjoy or something really complicated or something really high-minded with lots of big words and shit and stuff. The problem is we're using our smarts on stupid stuff. I don't think it's a huge stretch to suggest that Donald Trump could only get elected in a country that thinks comic books are important. Now this, to me, is where he really jumps the shark in terms of absolute baseless assertion bullshit. And it's where you really expose yourself, Bill. So comic books equal Donald Trump. Now you do know, Bill, that comic books are not exclusively popular in America. They're popular in lots of other countries over the world. And not every other country in the world has got a Donald Trump. Now, Bill kind of alluded to this uh, about a year or so ago when he did a new rule section called the Orange Sphincter, in which he compared the way Donald Trump speaks to the way superheroes he believes are portrayed. But there's a kind of disconnect there, Bill, in the idea that because you're into superheroes or you're into superhero comics, that you can't tell the difference between a real person saying real things and a comic book superhero. Do you honestly think that your average Trump supporter is also a massive comic book nerd? Because I would suggest that that's not necessarily the case. And even if they were, even if someone was a massive comic book nerd and a Donald Trump supporter, are you honestly saying that the, 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 the contributing factor to their Donald Trump support is the fact that they have been a lifelong fan of comic books? You don't think maybe it's to do with the fact that they've been brainwashed or fed this a bunch of racist, paranoid, right-wing conspiracy theories that have been constantly spat out and fucking flooded into their brain, you know, by right-wing media outlets, by Fox News, like Infowars, like Breitbart, like The Sun, The Daily Mail, Sky News, The New York Post, Telegraph, Daily Wire, The Daily Star, Rebel Media, The, the Daily Express, The Washington Post, etc, etc, etc. You don't think that, you do, do you think that maybe that bill has got a tiny bit more to do with it than, shall we say, whether or not they've got a couple of Superman comics? I mean, in the past, Bill, you have compared Trump to Hitler. What was, so what was Hitler? What was the reason for Hitler? Did, was Hitler a result of comic books? That would be kind of ironic considering the first person to ever publicly and proudly punch a Nazi in the face was Captain America. I mean, what is the difference really between what Bill Maher is saying here and those people who say that rock music, you know, Marilyn Manson was responsible for the Columbine Massacre or that, you know, video games are responsible for a rise in violence. Now, I can't speak for Stan Lee personally, or his fan base. But what I can tell you is this, is that Stan Lee was very outspoken and very much a supporter of things like civil rights, tolerance, diversity, and yes, social justice. In 1968, at the height of the civil rights movement, he wrote in an article, I quote, bigotry and racism are among the deadliest social ills plaguing the world today. But unlike a team of costume supervillains, they can't be halted with a punch in the snoot or a zap from a ray gun. The only way to destroy them is to expose them, to reveal them for the insidious evils they really are. Sooner or later, if man is ever to be worthy of his destiny, we must fill our hearts with tolerance, for then, and only then, will we be truly worthy of the concept that man was created in the image of God, a God who calls us all his children. Now, I know you won't like that little bit at the end about God and all the other stuff, Bill, although you do have the same argu argumentation and reasoning skills as one, it would seem. Even a book as dumb as the Bible gets this. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, 
I put away childish things. I think I'll leave you, Bill, with this. It's a quote from C.S. Lewis that I think is very appropriate here. Critics who treat adult as a term of approval, instead of merely a descriptive term, cannot be adult themselves. To be concerned about being grown up, to admire the grown up just because it is grown up, to blush at the suspicion of being childish, these things are the marks of childhood and adolescence. And in childhood and adolescence they are, in moderation, healthy symptoms. Young things ought to want to grow, but to carry on into middle life or even into early manhood, this concern about being adult is a mark of really arrested development. When I was 10, I read fairy tales in secret and would have been ashamed if I had been found doing so. Now that I am 50, I read them openly. When I became a man, I put away childish things, including a fear of childishness and a desire to be very grown up. Let me tell you a personal story about what I learned from superheroes. Right? Now, a couple of years ago, I was diagnosed with a condition called peripheral neuropathy, which is a degenerative nerve disorder where basically the feeling in your nerves start to die gradually. And it's called peripheral neuropathy because it happens to the peripherals of your body, your limbs, your, your feet. And it starts with your feet, your toes, and it works way right up. Now, Fortunately, I am at a stage now where it's being treated, but for a long time I wasn't. And I needed something to cling on to because I was worried that eventually I would lose the feeling in both my arms and legs. And that could lead to me needing to have a wheelchair. It could even lead to amputation. Right? And I, I realised something whilst I was watching, uh, whilst I was watching the Avengers movie, and I realised something that. And I realised something about disabilities, and that is that superheroes are actually people with very unique disabilities. I know they're called superpowers, but they present to these people and these characters the exact same problems that disabilities present to everyone else. They can't live a normal life. They are the bane of their existence. They stop them from being able to mix and, and to live in the real world. They stop them from being able to have relationships. They stop them from being able to function. And I realised something that that's exactly what a superhero is. A superhero is someone with a disability who has to learn to overcome it. And in, any, in essence, every disability can grant someone the ability to do something that <coughs> someone else necessarily couldn't. Right? I've got no feeling in my hands or feet. I can't feel anything in my hands or feet. I can bash the shit out of them all fucking day. I've actually got a broken knuckle. If you look at that knuckle there, see how that one is? I'm up bigger than that one. Right? It's because that one's been broken. It's been broken for a year, a year and a half. I don't fucking know when I did it. I'm constantly fucking, I've cut my feet open, I've broken my ankles and didn't know I've broken my fucking toes. And I realised something that actually, that could be pretty fucking cool, handy, you know. There could be situations in the world, they're not going to happen, it's completely unlikely, but there could be a situation and that it, in which, you know, someone needs to step up and save someone or do something. Um, but people can't do it because it's hurting. It's hurting them. But I could step up because I, I've got no. I can't feel any pain. I'm invincible as long as it's up to me ankles and wrists. But I'm invincible, never the fucking less. And that's when I created the idea of being called Brother Neuro. That's where that comes from. That's where the title of this channel and that name came from. It's a, it's someone who has no feelings, and as a result of those feelings, yes. It's disabling to them, but in a way, it's also liberating. And that's what I learn from superhero movies. And that's what I learn, in essence, from Stan Lee. And I'm not saying that there aren't legitimate criticisms that you could make about comic books or comic fandom or the whole culture surrounding comic books. But to suggest that simply enjoying comic books is therefore 
enough to, that you can pass judgment on someone and make generalizations is, is just an utterly baseless assertion that you have in no way met the burden of proof. And that's why people are upset with you, Bill. That's why people got angry. Because you're blaming them. You're saying that they are... That you're not, you're not saying they're a symptom of a, of a toxic culture. You're saying they're part of the root problem. It's hard for us to sit there and say, Oh, I've got nothing against comic books or Stan Lee, but he is responsible for basically creating something that ultimately led to Donald Trump. How dare you?